Hi, my name is Tina Hergert and I work as a paper conservator at the Museo Paulista of University of São Paulo. And I would like to thank the ICON Book and Paper Group for this opportunity to show you around at the museum and at the Paper Conservation Lab. I will give you some insights to the reopening project and I will also emphasize the preventive conservation issues because it is a large part of my responsibilities. First, let me tell you a little bit about the Museo Paulista. It is one of the oldest museums in Brazil, first in Sao Paulo and was opened to the public in 1895. To give an idea, the paper collection includes more than 80,000 images, about 200 linear meters of archives and over 114,000 books. We also have more than 450,000 objects in our collection related to the history of Brazil and Sao Paulo. The original project was to build a palace-like monument to celebrate the independence of Brazil and celebrate the, the event that took place here in the city of Sao Paulo in 1822 on Ipiranga stream where the imperial allegedly declared independence from Portugal. So on September 7th in 2022 we will celebrate the bicentenary of Brazilian independence and on this date reopening of the museum is planned. The use of the building as a museum was an adaptation that occurred some years after inauguration. This fact is very relevant and challenging for exhibition of museum objects and for preventive conservation. São Paulo is one of the most populated cities in Brazil. Over 21 million citizens live in the metropolitan area. The city is located in the southeast of Brazil. The museum is located in a park Parque da Independência and comprises an important architectural and landscape ensemble within Sao Paulo. I would say it is a beautiful green spot in, in this huge city and people in the neighborhood, including me, love to spend time in the park and around the museum. We are a historical museum part of University of Sao Paulo and almost every student of Sao Paulo City and Sao Paulo State visited our museum before its closure at least once. The closure of the museum was carried out on emergency basis in August 2013 due to the risk of plaster selling collapsing in some rooms. After closure the entire collections workshops and offices were relocated to the temporary houses and storages in the neighborhood Ipiranga, close to old building. In total, seven properties were rented, of which five house collection and the museum's library. One of them is a paper conservation lab we will visit today. The new areas of the museum will be dedicated to temporary exhibitions and will be fully conditioned. But the historic building will keep its original natural ventilation. This, again, is a very important fact for decision of exhibiting such sensitive objects like paper or photograph. And the museum team dedicated a significant amount of time uh, by finding appropriate solutions and reconciling the conservation need and the curatorial intentions. We as conservators were involved in every phase of the renovation project since the beginning and are proud to be part of this multidisciplinary team. Preventive conservation, pest management and risk management after reopening is a concern for the museum team. Around the building are French gardens and fountains, the woodland, Hort of Laristal, and finally stream of Ipiranga that passes through the north of this park. The building has a large amount of windows, doors, lodge to improve natural ventilation. To promote permanent ventilation, new openings in the windows frames will be installed. The high rate of air renewal are important to eliminate the natural humidity due to the building materials and the climate of Sao Paulo. However, they can also increase the amount of pollutions that may attack the building and collection. It can also provoke an increase of microbiological infestations. 
Considering all these facts, the conservators understand the impossibility to implement restricted parameters in the exhibiting area of old building. Decisions are complex and several aspects need to be addressed simultaneously, such as the selection of the objects according to their sensibility for degradation, the choice of the most suitable place for better preservation of each and every item, and the development of furniture that can mitigate negative impacts of natural ventilation. During the partial lockdown, uh, due to the spread of COVID-19, in the beginning of March last year, all works on site at museum were stopped, creating a challenge. But quarantine time allowed the conservation team to participate much more in the discussion of the exhibition projects. After numerous dis meetings and discussions, several strategies were adopted by conservators and curators. More careful selection of the artifacts, as well as environmental mon monitoring and study of the building's behavior before and after reopening, shorter exposure times and turnover of objects of, uh, or exhibition of frag productions is another important preservation strategy. Most of the museum paper objects will be exhibited in shelves with passive control features. Currently, eight conservation assistants, as well as metal conservator and photography conservator, are hired and are working with another six conservators of Museo Paulista, who are specialists in conservation of ceramic, painting, paper, plastic, textile and wood. The paper conservation team is working at the facility what, which was adapted for use as a laboratory, putting some challenges for our work, but we could divide it in two parts, dry and clean and dirty and wet. The part where, where we perform clean procedures like repairs and mounting, uh, we also store most of our materials and have our office integrated in the space. This space has natural ventilation, we uh, also keep our material closed and protected from dust to help us to find things. We put the labels on the shelves and compartments and uh, it is a struggle to keep it organized. So we did the divisions of the cardboard or acrylic to help us to keep order. We have very limited access to specialized materials for conservation in Brazil. There are few specialized suppliers. We have only one company which executes a limited amount of conservation equipment. Being a public institution, the whole process of acquisition is extremely bureaucratic and we have limited resources to buy important products. So basically, we need to adapt all the time. Some nat national conservation papers are available for envelopes and folders, but the boxes and material for the boxes we need to import, as well as another specialized materials like adhesives and tools. Normally we have, uh, we do lots of repairs. Uh, for this we use water-based adhesives and Japanese tissues. We use mostly wet starch, but also methyl cellulose, glucel, and to reduce amount of water by these procedures, especially on soluble ink or gall inks, removable tissues are used. The most frequent treatment at this conservation lab are the superficial cleaning. Due to the tropical climate conditions, fungal infestation is a frequent case. We prefer cleaning in separate room, especially if the collection item will be exhibited, any fungal suspect are treated to prevent increase of damage. Normally, we apply dry cleaning and fumigation with ethanol solution. All procedures are executed regarding individual protection and safety measures. We are using protection equipment and we store all our solvents in special storage. Paper objects for the museum reopening exhibition are diverse. Photo albums, books, notebooks, folders, drawings, printed documents and manuscripts. Last year we executed individual condition reports with recommendation um, like like intensity, time of exposure, special requirements for exhibition support and brief description of treatment needs for each object. One of these objects 
is a photography of 19th century which show the most famous painting of the museum, the Shout of Ipiranga. This album in photography um, has a description and signature of the painter Pedro Americo for the architect of the building, Thomas Bezzi. The picture had a tear and suffered deformation, so after cleaning the tear was repaired and now capillary humidification is applied to reduce deformation. Probably it will not be totally reduced. Uh, the photograph will be exhibited in shelf due to sensitive technique and in a temporary exhibition. Uh, the new temporary exhibition areas will have full environmental control and by exhibiting in a shelf we expect to have restricted light exposure. We will also use the blue wool scale and monitor the shelf for humidity in, temper in temperature. These are monitoring measures that we will adapt for all sensitive objects in the exhibit. At this moment, we are also treating a diversity of ephemeral materials, postcards and calendars with representation of famous paintings of the museum. As I said, we try to select objects in good condition. These objects are also meant to rotate. We have several similar items in the museum collection, which make this preservation strategy possible. As conservation treatment, we do cleaning with brushes and sponges, and then we do mounting. Here you see the drawings of the Italian architect Thomas Bezzi, who designed the historic building. These drawings are, were already treated by the conservator before me, uh, but there are some interventions which are aging faster than the rest of the drawing. For now, we just did the dry cleaning and we are investigating the need for further intervention on these important documents and uh, the need of removal of old interventions. So I hope you enjoyed the visit and now know a little bit more about the museum and the conservation work in this reopening project. It is a great opportunity to be able to show you around and beside the geographical distance be able to share with you our experiences. So thank you for your attention.